At Western Springs Stadium, Auckland's guides, brownies and rangers stage a food for Britain rally. Guest of honour is Lady Baden-Powell, world chief guide, and she takes her place on the rostrum beneath a globe which carries greetings from the guides. From the trees at the northern end of the stadium swarm thousands of guides and brownies to welcome their chief and bring parcels for the children of Great Britain. Each patrol leader has a food parcel made up by members of her patrol and Lady Baden-Powell receives them on behalf of the British children. The SS Empress of New Zealand comes alongside to load for England and the Rangers provide a willing working party. With her decks filled, the Empress of New Zealand starts the parcels on their long trip to England, a gift from the guides of Auckland to the children of Britain. Showgrounds Hamilton, the Cambridge team and their opponents Morris Belay line up before the final of the Auckland Provincial Polo Tournament. There's a good crowd in spite of showery weather and from the start of the first chucker the pace is on. Cambridge put in a strong attack right away though clever riding off tactics by Morrinsville keep them well away from the goal area. But Cambridge keep up the pressure and after five minutes play Brown scores with a nice shot from near the 40 yard mark. On the throw-in, another attack by Cambridge develops, and once more the ball is forced down into Morrinsville territory. The game's warming up now, and hitting's becoming more sure. Now Morrinsville have the ball, and Mellow's riding hard with it towards the Cambridge goal. Claus is there supporting him, but Hannon and Brown manage to ride them off, and Hannon clears from the goal area. There are seven chuckers of seven and a half minutes each, with three minutes between chuckers. With the fourth chucker nearly over, the score is 3-2 in Morrinsville's favour. Play is right in the Cambridge goal mouth, and Morrinsville look like scoring again, but with claws trying hard, the chucker ends and it's half time. The players have three or four ponies each, which they change between chuckers. Morrinsville seem to be doing most of the attacking now. If anything, they're hitting rather better than their opponents, but it's still anyone's game. Now Claus has broken clear and he's galloping hard towards the Cambridge goal with the rest of the field hard after him. In a squall of rain, a ruck has developed right in the goal mouth, but it's so congested here neither side can get at the ball. There's an opening and Douglas doesn't miss the chance making Morrinsville's fifth goal. Cambridge scored again, but with the final score at 5-3, the match and trophy went to Morrinsville after a hard-ridden game. From New Zealand timbers, this Mananui veneer factory produces a third of the country's total output of plywood. After being steamed and barked, the logs are peeled on a rotary lathe. By manufacturing plywood, a saving is effected in our diminishing supply of timber, as it's possible to cover a greater area with plywood than with sawn timber. The veneer goes to the clipper where it's trimmed to its approximate size, the waste being used to feed the boiler furnaces. As the veneer still retains a lot of moisture from the steaming process, it's put through a steam-heated travelling dryer for 30 minutes, and it's then racked for about three months to dry. Passing through the glue spreader, the centre pieces are coated with cold casein glue. They're then placed between the backs and faces, and the three layers are now ready to go into the hot press. automatic hot press, a temperature of 225 degrees under pressure for 15 minutes ensures a secure joining of the three layers of veneer which now become plywood.
As the press opens, this batch is taken out of the reverse side to continue through the factory, and a fresh batch is ready waiting to take its place. The next operation is the trimming of the fly to its required measurements, in this case, six for three. All that's left to do now is to smooth the rough surfaces, which is done by passing the fly through this triple drum sanding machine. The finished job is now graded and stacked with the rest of the day's output of 26,000 square feet of plywood, ready for dispatch to industry all over New Zealand. This little piggy, being weighed at a farm near Pukekohe, is one of a family getting very special attention. A sugar sack takes the place of the usual three-cornered pants, but no Plunkett baby was ever more carefully watched than these which have their weight checked every week. Mr Hickey, the proud farmer, has good reason to be pleased with them. These bonny little eight-week-olds are part of a world's record litter of 19, born to Mr Hickey's large white sow, Barn and Verna. Verna found 19 rather a lot to keep an eye on. She rolled on two, and then there were 17. Even 17 children are quite a handful, and things get a little congested at meal times. Come on, boys, let's try the other side. Not much better here. With feeding facilities for only 14, there are always two sittings for supper. I'm in the second sitting. In an exclusive sound interview, Verna stated, I wish I got ten bob a week for each of mine. Thank you, Verna. And now it's time to take the children tat out. Barn and Verna is a Food for Britain campaign all on her own. By the time her family is 14 weeks old, they'll be capable of providing over a ton of edible meat. It's a feat any pig would be proud of, and another world record achievement for New Zealand farmers. Thank you.